praise him and to magnify his name. And we are here for a purpose. Amen. And if our purpose is to, be, to serve God, let us serve him in spirit and in truth. Amen. That's what the Lord wants us to do this morning. To worship him in spirit and in truth. And when you, and when you worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, you will worship him in respect. Amen. Amen. Thank God we can do it. A lot of people cannot do it. A lot of people have to be hiding to worship. But thank God we're here this morning and we can praise the true and living God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, last week we are uh, we close up chapter 18 of John. We close it up last week. This morning we're going into verse 1 and chapter 19. John chapter 19 and verse 1. That's where we're going this morning. We just have a few verses, not much. So then uh, the time moving on, so then we will stop when the Holy Spirit tells us to stop, we observe what hap was happening for, uh, for a few weeks. For a few weeks, we were just able to take two verses, not more, <laughs> just two verses. And it was so strong last week and even a week before that we were just able to take two verses in the chapter. I do not know how it's going to be this morning, but... Uh, the Spirit of God is in our midst this morning and always, and we depend on him to carry us through. We observe what is happening around the world. It is crazy around the world. Not only here, but not only around the world, but in Los Angeles. It is crazy. We fire all around. I don't know what happened. If it is a plague or if it is a curse or whatever it is, but the Lord will take care of it. And you know how the Lord can take care of that fire for us? With prayer and supplication. The Lord showed me that even in my study. In, that uh, there will be fire. And it mentioned in the Bible of the fire that was taking place in different countries, different states. But one way that fire can really solve is with prayer and supplication. When God's people uh, put down their knees, even as uh, Brother Craig was saying uh, in our prayer meeting, the Lord has given us power to speak to our mountains, even as he said. And if we have the power to speak to the mountain and to command them to be cast into the sea, then we have that same power to stop that fire. And I believe that. I believe that. And we can do it with faith believing, not with doubting. Because people sometimes go on to pray and they have doubts in their hearts. And one day, will it happen? Will it ever happen? Do it make sense that I should pray? You know that. And sometimes you have some pain or you have, you have some trouble, something in your midst. And you're saying, will it ever happen? Do it make sense that I should pray? But then, it happened by faith. So this morning, we will trust God for a miracle. That that fire will cease. And the people that are mourning for the lost ones, how many die, I do not know. But some may have lost their horses and lost their houses. All sort of animals, whatever animals they have. So those people are grieving, right? So then, we still have it good on this side. Because some people go in pain. So then we have that verse 1 on the board. Brother Craig has the mic in his hand. So then he'll read that verse 1, Brother Craig, for us. On the board right now. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Okay. Continue reading. You finish? Tell me how far you want. Verse 1. 
โอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคเวสต์เซกเวสต์วันโอ้วันไหนสิเวสต์ยาเวสต์วันและเวสต์โต้นู่นนี่คือคือเวลาคุณอ่านไหมนะคุณไม่อ่านคำที่ถูกต้องเวสต์วันของข้อ9นั้นพิลาตดังนั้นตัดเยซูและสกัดเขาโอเคอ่านเวสต์โต้ And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Okay, we'll pause there a little while with those two verses, and we could meditate on those two verses. What was really taking place? Pilate. We observe that Pilate said in many verses. That I find no fault in him, right? Yep. He said that in more than one verse. I find no fault in this man. But we observe that he reached to a case or to a point where he had to scourge our Lord. We know the meaning of scourge. Scourge means to beat, right? He reached to a stage <clears throat> that he had to beat him. <laughs> Let's look at, speculate on that well, meditate on that well, that man beating God. That's a serious case, people, right? That's no joke. That's no joke that God would allow man to beat him. We could run with that as a message. Isn't that true, Brother Craig? We could run with that as a message and cry out to man, "What have we done? What was going on, and what is still going on? That man had to beat the Creator, the Savior, the Healer, the Teacher, the Conqueror, the Provider." Let me stop there. Somebody else take over. Somebody else take over of what really happened there. Somebody give some emphasis on 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 that verse, verse one and verse two. Watch it and meditate on it and speak on it before we go on further. Don't get freeze, because that's something that can make you freeze. Because the devil only shot you up in that one, you know that. So, this is a, this scripture points out, I think, and cries out so loudly that God is permitting all these events to happen. This is not. Uh, Something that could happen in normal situations. It's only because God is putting His Son through this. This has nothing to do with the people there or anything. It's the Father executing His plan for salvation, or otherwise, everybody there would have been dead instantly. I mean, how are you going to hit God and get away with it? How you gonna hit his son if you don't believe he's God? How you how can you hit his son and get away with it? It's just no way anybody lived through this situation except the father had a plan and is executing his plan for salvation. You get it? They still have more to it. That is real people. But what Brother Craig is simply saying right now. God had to allow it. God had to put His Son through it, and that's true. And that's the only way a man could raise his hand, and the hand didn't fall on his side, and stay just like that. From the time you do that, God just do that. Also, woo, and just do that, and His hand stay just like that and can't move. But God allow it. In order 
to save mankind because mankind was messed up. God allowed his son to go through that in order to bring salvation to mankind or to redeem mankind from what Adam did. One thing can spoil a house. One thing can spoil a city. One thing can spoil a nation. And you know what that one thing is? Tell me. Anybody. One thing. Hmm? No, that one thing that have spoiled that nation or spoiled lies. the world. Lies. Hmm? Lies. Telling lies. Pride. 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 No, he said lies. Lying is one of them, yeah, but that was not a main thing actually. Okay, well, lying in a sense, yes, because the devil lied to Adam. Right? But that was not a real main thing. The main thing was sin or disobedient. Sin or unbelief, if I would use the word unbelief. Well, unbelief is still sin, but it makes me think about when Pastor Carl said, if you have some food and you just take one little teeny drop of toilet water and put it in that food, you only took a little drop. Can you still eat it? Well, it's contaminated, even though it's a little teeny drop. And so it makes it me think it of up. it, it makes it me up. think of sin, right? Messing up God's plan. Now there is one, there is a, a poison. I know of a poison that we used to use to spray grass. Right? We used to spray grass with that. Especially people had a lot of bananas. I know about that because we I'm from the Caribbean. You know what his name? Roundup. Wrong, not even wrong. Roundup is still bad, but I don't they call it Gramazoon. Gramazoon. Roundup is deadly, but Gramazoon is even worse. And the less you put, is the more bad. You put that, a little tip of that in a little water, and before you finish, you messed up. It cannot reverse. Gramazoon. Gramazoon. Roundup is bad, but Gramazoon is worse. Yes. I'm trying to understand what I said wronged up is bad, right. but Gramazone is worse. Gramazone, that's the name. When you put, when you put it, 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 uh, it looking like a, we know malt, right? The black beer, they call malt? Malt. Malt, the thing we drink. Malt. M-U-L-T. I think that's the way it's spelled? No. Okay. It, okay, yeah, because it is. Yes, what we drink it? We drink it. Mold. Not mold, mold. Like a mold, like a milkshake. Milkshake, like a right, that's right. You drink that. The color, I talking about the grammar zone is that color. Grammar zone is that color, but when you pour water in it in white, when you pour water in it in white. Now, I know it because I used to use it. I used to use it in, to, 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 to kill the grass. Uh, if I would run fast to say that, there was a preacher, a pastor we had back home. He, he's dead now. But uh, his name was John, John, uh, Horace John Lewis. He had a, a message over the year uh, every Sunday morning. La La Tala Vigile, Mones in, in French, you use it. Uh, I, that song you hear saying, I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back. We sing that song here all the time. Not going back, not going back. When he started his message, he used that, that term. And he used to go all around in the Caribbean as a missionary or evangelist, because he was an evangelist. And uh, one day he went. Uh, to a person home. In fact, he went in a shop and he buy a malt. Probably he was hungry, I don't know whatever happened, but he went to preach him and he went for he asked for that same malt I'm talking about. That drink. That drink. And instead the guy the, the, the woman gave him 
a bottle of malt. She gave him a bottle of Gramazone. You hear me? Yes. She had it on a fridge, a refrigerator. I cannot understand. And she said, well, he ended up in the hospital, but he didn't die. He didn't die as soon as he tasted it. But even when you taste that, it kill you immediately. But God protect him. Amen. All, his mouth, all his lips had burst up. All his lips had burst up. But just by taking it, it was taking, probably taking his scent, but he had already sipped it, probably, or whatever, I don't know. But he didn't kill him right away. He didn't kill him. It's long after he died. Oh. But, uh, and the excuse she make is that her husband went to the garden with that stuff. Because it, it always come by a gallon. They always sell it by a gallon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So sometimes, whatever you want, somebody pour some in a bottle. Or if you want to bring back some, you pour it in a bottle. And put it away far from children, far from pet, yeah. far from people. Right. But I don't know how it ended up on the free refrigerator. Right. Because when he bought that malt, it was hot. So she said, okay, let me exchange it for you for a cold one. And she went down the refrigerator and take it. And that's what it was. So it looked like, so it looked like a setup, right? Ain't it? No, I was saying, maybe the husband was trying to get rid of her. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying that to say, the world wants to get rid of us. Because we preach the word of God. And the devil will try every way. Hmm? But the critics say no. The world doesn't want to. Satan wants to, and he uses well, the world. I don't think the world realizes he's using them. Okay, then that's even a better way to use it. But uh, it has to be the world. But the devil actually used someone to do that, which is the world. But anyway, he. He died not so long, just a couple of years ago he died. But that happened a long time. And uh, that happened while I was in the Caribbean. And, and I, I'm here 28 years now, so it's a long time. And he just died probably a few years ago, probably two or three years ago. So, hmm? Me? Caribbean, Dominica. Caribbean, I'm from the Commonwealth of Dominica. But that man was living more or less in the country, but he partly go around the world because he was an evangelist. His, his name was Horace, 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 Lund, Horace John Lewis. Horace John Lewis. And he used to preach that message, uh, the prayer of evangelism. That was, his, that was his job, to go around to preach the word. He, some, but sometimes he go more to this French country, like Guadeloupe, Martinique, probably France and those places, because in our country is a broken French. So then he knew, he knew that language, so that he preached more that, but sometimes he speak English and sometimes French in order for it to spread. So I'm saying that to say it was deadly. And I don't know why I come up with that, but I'm talking about sin, how sin can be so deadly. How sin can be so deadly that man uh, caused God to send his son to die. But again, his son died long ago because God knew that man would do what he did. You get that? God knew that Adam would sin. Yes. But bef so before Adam sinned, God sent his son to die that when Adam sinned, that he would block, it would have blocked. So that's why we have a chance of salvation. Anybody understand that? You understand that, anybody? Anybody? Somebody explain that clearly. Well, God said he sent Jesus to lay down his life before the foundation of the world. Because, again, I believe, like Craig, like Elder Robinson said, God is dealing with a rogue angel the angel who thought he could overthrow heaven, and he deceived one-third of the angels with him. He, one-third of the angels got kicked out of heaven with him. That meant 
his deception was so strong that even other angels that had seen God believed this rogue angel and got kicked out with him. And um, as human beings, we have not seen. That's why we believe by faith. And God in his grace and mercy and kindness, knowing that we're no match for the devil. We are no match. But his son conquered, went, went on the cross, no sin. So it was illegal for him to, to die. So Jesus allowed himself to, to die. He got on the cross, went into the grave three days, and rose from the dead. And that wiped out the penalty for the whole world. The whole world. So it was checkmate to that angel. That angel could no longer um, reproach God about our sins because Jesus already took care of the sin factor. Here's the only thing. You got to believe. And Not it's it. by faith. You got to believe. It and happened. it is by faith. Okay. It is by faith. So we then... It is understood, right? No, the Bible said the natural man understandeth not the things of God because it is spiritually discerned. A stuff like that, it is not hard to be understood. But again, it is spiritual. You have to be born again to understand what you have just said or what we are now saying. Because people will be confused concerning that subject to understand how God sent his son to die before the foundation of the world. But God set up the world good. Yes. God set up his plan good yes. without any mistake. As a thing you always hear me saying, God have already gone down to the end of time right. and set his pole there and return. I didn't hear that nowhere. But God just showed me that. Right? Yes. God showed me that. And I didn't hear it nowhere. You ever hear it anywhere like that? The way I say it? The way I just explain it? Yeah. God have already gone on to the end of yeah. time and planted this pole? Yeah, absolutely. Who, who here is that beside me? It's right there when it says, before the foundation of the world, he knew what he was going to do with Christ. If he knew that, well... Some other people have put it this way. If you're writing a book, you know what the end of the book is before you write it. You know what you're going to do. So God writing this story about mankind already knew what he was going to do when he started the whole process. When he created the earth, he knew what the end was. Okay. Now so that has been taught I mean, since I was a little boy, I've heard that, that, okay. that God knew and has been at the end of time. As a matter of fact, my mother used to say that we're actually going backwards through time, that he started at the end and we're actually going to the beginning because he knew what the end was. And we also see it in Revelations. Revelations tells you what the end is. So it's obvious God had to be at the end and know what those things are going to be to cause John to write it down. He's like, this is what's going to happen. The beast, the image of the beast, the false prophet, the woman sitting on the, uh, uh, on the seven mountains, and, and he who believes in me shall live forever. All that stuff is written. So it's already been. So you observe what happened? We're still on one verse. <laughs> anybody, anybody observe that? We're still on one verse. Those who say have to say something. Predestination. That makes me think of something. Where I'm saying it's right, it's all right, because of the fact that you can look at your life. If you look at your life, and the way God had, you know, you think about he knew the ending, you know, you know, when we started out. Yes. And everything. He said, but, you know, when we started out, 
there is a number, and when your number comes around, you going out of here. Okay. And they would say, and, and I, I know my husband laughs at me all the time. I said, baby, I, our number has not come around. I said, because we haven't finished what God sent us here for. I don't care how old we are, because God don't look at no numbers and stuff like that either. And uh, that is real. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, know you, you, you know the way I'm, know to, I'm talking about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it is. God knows everything. 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 It's his story. That's right. Yeah, it is his story. And, and one time uh, God was saying to me, Renee, if you wrote a book, you already know what from beginning to the end it's your if you're writing a book you know the story from beginning to end and the scripture that comes to mind is he's the author and finisher of our faith and Jesus said you did not cho choose me I chose you okay. glory to God glory to God so each person that gets saved it's not because we choose God it's because God I chose us uh, go ahead. And I think there's one more thing I'd like to add is that we so much of the time underestimate this God we serve. Um, it's like I tell people from time to time, the scientists found a star that collapsed and in their studying this star, they found out the inside of the star is made of pure diamond. It's it's, this star is bigger than our solar system, and yet it's made of pure diamond, and they were estimating how much, it, how much it's worth, and it's, 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 yeah, well, they said it's 200 trillion, billion, billion carats or something like that. It's an incredible number. If he can do that, if he can put stars in the heavens, he knows what he's going to do on this little small dinky little planet. It's a no challenge. I think we're an afterthought. And it's like one of the angels said in, in Psalms. He said, what is man that you even consider him? We're just, we're just nothing. We're some peach fuzz on this thing that God is doing. Okay. No, that's, that's true. What we're talking about is just a little... Like a sun, a drop of sun. <laughs> of a drop what? in the bucket. I of, think Renee uh, always says that. It's, yes, the it, earth is a drop in the a, bucket. A drop in the bucket or a drop of sun in the bucket compared to what is before us yeah. to even speak about. Yeah. Man thinks he's smart or he's intelligent or wise. <laughs> but I was, even I was listening to Charlie Pride, the way he sings his song, I'm talking about the greatness of God. The greatness of God. Our God is big. And to be a part of God's plan, we have to praise God every day. Yes. We are somebody. God make us somebody. Yes, he did. Right? Yes. Yes. God, he loves us. He brought us in. His family. He brought us in. Yes. And then you ask yourself, who am I? That God should die for me. Mm. But yet, he sent his son to die for us. We are included. Yeah. So nobody can say, you know that part of it. Yes, bro. And also, time is a construct that is made for man. It's something that's based on our sun and our earth going around in a circle and the sun coming up and the sun going down. But in this whole creation, there's no guarantee there is such a thing as time. Yep. And God, having lived forever, it's one, one pastor said this, and it always shocked me. He said, how many times Don't has create. God created heavens and earth over the last few millennia, billions and trillions of years that he's been alive? We don't know what we too much already here. Huh? Move away from that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just pointing out something. I know. God but, is forever. You heard me, right? Don't play around that area too much. Move away from that area, that subject. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> it's where I live. 
I know. It's where I live. I know. So my point is <laughs> that God is so big and so powerful that these things we're trying to wrap our minds around, they're nothing to him. Yeah, something big is about to happen. I felt it. That's why like I tell Brother Craig, do plead it. That's why I tell Brother Craig, do plead it too much. Yeah, yeah. Something big is about to happen. Woo, hallelujah. You get me too hot, Brother Craig. That's why I warn you. Don't go there. Don't go there. Woo, I'm just a God. little bit of pee, you know, in this whole thing. But I do sense that something really great oh boy. is getting ready to happen. You know, I don't have, mm. you know, that's nothing that I can just say that the Lord has said this to me. But I know that something great is getting ready oh to happen. God. And we better get ready. Better be ready. We better get ready. Oh, we better get ready. We better get ready. We in God. Yeah. We in God's we are in God's system. We are in his system. Yeah. We I'm glad. I'm glad we are in his system. So in system. Some people don't know. And they see that little church around the corner. And they just pass on and just go away. But I would urge them to come in. So if you're in my voice this morning, anywhere you are. I would urge you to step in and sit down for a little while. Even though it seems like nothing happened at the moment, just rest for a little while. Because God is speaking to us in this corner. And the Lord is telling us something. We just take one verse. Brother Craig read two verses. We just really explain one verse. And we have to stop now. You know that. I try to understand what is happening. I... But God is making it happen. I don't know. Not me. Not me. I actually saw the many one, two, three, four, five, five verses in already in chapter 19. And we just have to take two. Not even two because we didn't get on the platting business where they put plat that thing and put on Jesus' head. We didn't talk about that. Right? Where the, where, the, where the soldiers plot that thorn or that pricker and put on his head. And as we sit down here, we could see that blood running down his face. We don't talk about that yet. We have to emphasize on that, right? Because you get one little prick. I, I, I can talk much about that because being diabetic, sometimes you have to prick your finger and squeeze out that blood, right? But not only that, if you have flower garden and have to go into the flower garden and by chance you get a prick and it burns so much but you, you, you squeeze it to see if that, 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 that prick will stick and remain, still remain inside. You know what I'm talking about? If that, if that thorn still remain in your flesh because it, sometimes it burns so much and you take a pin or whatever and looking for that thorn in your hand to get it out. But it's nothing, anything close to a garden flower, flowers prickle, like that thorn. Because I know those kind of big, those kind of big stuff. But we're not going there. We have to go there next week. That's verse 2. We have to go there to talk about that. And Jesus bear that for us. So then uh, we have a right to thank him and we'll thank him for the day and even the week time we'll remember that. And thank him and ask him for forgiveness where we are feeling him. And thank him for enduring that pain and didn't get angry and stop it halfway. <laughs> He didn't stop it halfway. That tells us he's God. He's really God. Because it was enough pain to stop it halfway. You get what I'm talking about? Amen. It was enough pain to say, you know something? I do decide to go through that. Yes. I'm going to stop right now because too much pain. 
for mankind. I'd rather to just make another nation than to go through that to bring back that nation that didn't obey me. So then, it have much that we could talk about. But so this morning, let's stop. Let's pick up the offering and close up. Let's close up. Because we could run with that and to emphasize on that and to get filled with the Holy Spirit.